again folks. Tonight's video is going to be an electronics kit build. I know a lot of you have been asking me to do more of these recently and I'm really conscious of the fact that I haven't done one in quite some time. So I thought tonight I'd do one but put a little bit of a twist on it. Rather than doing a cheap Chinese kit from say AliExpress or you know Banggood places like that, I thought I'd build a kit that was available retail here in the UK. So this afternoon I popped into Maplin which is pretty much the only sort of retail electronics hobbyist shop left in the UK and uh, picked up this Velamin mini kit. It's the MK120 infrared light barrier. So I thought we'd have a look at the kit, of course build it and compare it to you know the likes of the kits that you can get from one of those aforementioned Chinese retailers. So here we go, uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, 1 to 4 metre range, soldering required, difficulty 2 out of 5 boxes, <laughs> it's got a buzzer alarm, yeah, we can see the components in there, and on the back a little bit of information, applications and to visitors, one against burglars, set boundaries, science projects, etc, etc, a little bit of detail there in terms of the power supply required and the dimensions of the board, um, made in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, so Velamin, they're, they're fairly common, you'll have heard of them before, um, they're an, an international company. Um, this cost in Maplin's, wait for it, um, it was on special offer, it should have been £12.99, pence, which is around, I don't know, 15 or $16, dollars, maybe even more. Um, it was on special offer for £8.99, so around 10 bucks, something like that. Um, of course, that is fairly expensive. Well, it's really expensive when you compare it to the Chinese kits that you can purchase. But let's have a look at the quality uh, and see what we get for our money. Inside here, we've got fairly good instructions. Uh, you know, give them credit for that. Um, fairly simple. We've got, you know, details of the transistors, you know, where they go, you know, the positions and what type. Shows you how to co uh, correctly orientate the LEDs. Um resistor values and locations etc etc for the two boards so this is a transmitter board and this is the receiver board a little bit of uh you know don't don't put electronic stuff in the bin you know the waste regulations or whatever uh, is is mandatory here in europe i don't know if they will be after brexit but never mind um but yeah let's go on ahead and uh, go on ahead i should say and have a look at the the boards so yeah, not too bad. I don't suppose the silk screen uh, on that is not aligned correctly. Um, it's a paper board, you know, it's uh, pressed paper. So there's multiple layers of paper with a resin and it gets squashed down to make that actual board. Uh, and then, of course, they put the copper on one side and, yeah, really, really cheap NAF boards, really. Um, we, again, we well, not again, but to start comparing it to the Chinese kits, pretty much every Chinese kit you get nowadays comes with, you know, sort of FR4 type, you know, fiberglass PCBs, nice quality PCBs with, uh, you know, nice quality solder mask and silk screens on. Um, yeah, this is just a bit, yeah. Anyway, further on down the box packaging, uh, we've got two 9 volt battery clips, which I suppose is quite nice. Um, you don't generally get those with Chinese kits. We've got our buzzer here. Um, now, when I saw that on the side of the packaging, um, I thought I'd seen one this particular model before, and I dug through my parts bin. I do have a used one, uh, which I got in a lot of used uh, electronics components I purchased, so this one's a bit chewed up and stuff. It does work, so I think I'll keep the new one and use the old one in this kit. In here, we've got some uh, capacitors, DC jacks, we've got our infrared uh, transmitting LEDs, our photodiodes, um, LED, you know, red LED, and uh, a socket for the IC. IC is this, it's a LM324N, which is, I think it's a low power um, quad op amp, something like that, I think I uh, saw when I looked online. This is the uh, transmitter board, uh, again same type of PCB, if you look at the solder mask on that I, I thought maybe it had been touched up, in fact I think it has been touched up with a, a green sharpie, I think there's been, you can see there's almost like a, 
a small area where it hasn't flowed into and rather than just leave the orange board they've, they've popped a sharpie on there in fact let's just test that where's my isopropyl alcohol here we go and of course if this is a sharpie it should just come straight off Yep, that's exactly what they've done. So, yeah, they've just uh, hand filled that in with uh, green green sharpie. Yeah, not not particularly brilliant quality. And in here, uh, we've got four uh, BC five four sevens NPNs, I think those are, uh, and a few resistors and diodes. So, with the, the kit evaluation out the, the way, I suppose the next thing to do is build the thing. So, I'll probably do this real time. So, if you don't want to listen to me ramble on, because I will be rambling on from now on, uh, from now forward, <laughs> then, of course, you can skip to the end and have a look and see if it works. So, where do we start? We'll, we'll start with the transmitter first, I think. And uh, we'll get more instructions here just to see what component values we need. It doesn't actually mention the values on there. A lot of the cheap Chinese kits do. Um, but, you know, they're relying on the instructions here. Where A lot of the Chinese kit basically rely on the silver screen because you don't often get instructions with those. So let's uh, crack on ahead. Right, um, we'll go with the resistors first. So R2, R3 is brown, black, yellow. Yeah, 100k. R1, 4 and 5 is 1K, so yeah, we'll go with, the, go with the 1Ks first. So brown, black, red, R1, R4 and R5, okay, so R1, R4 and R5, So yeah, we've, we've we've not got much in in the way of uh, retail electronic stores these days. Of course, you've got PC World and Curry's and all those places where you can go and buy like a a TV or or something like that. But there's no way you can really go in off the street and purchase electronic stuff. Uh, we did have was it Class Olsen? Um, they sold like soldering irons and stuff like that, but nothing in the way of kits really. And it's really disappointing that you you know there isn't that ability to just go in and browse nowadays uh, i used to love as a as a youngster going into um tandy uh, as it was at uh, radio shack in the us of course um used to you know spend all my days in there really uh, as a child getting in with pocket money and buying you know components and kits and tools and stuff like that and it was generally okay um you know okay quality and okay prices trouble with Maplin is because they've cornered the market you know or it's a fairly niche market they can charge whatever they want I, I genuinely don't know how they're still in business um with the prices they charge for some of the the kits i mean this kit um well pretty much i had a look on aliexpress before um, i started this video and you can buy a commercially available version of this kit if you like you know ready made essentially in a nice enclosure you know transmitting and receiving a nice enclosure you know for for the same price as this is to buy as a kit here in the uk it's just it's really disappointing um you know that we, we don't we don't have anywhere that, that sell stuff at a reasonable price in terms of kits um okay so r2 and r3 is 100k so that's brown black Yellow, yep. We'll chuck them in there like so. I don't even know if um, I know ta uh, Radio Shack in the US. I think they went bust as well. Um, if anybody can clarify that, I know certainly they got a rid of an awful lot of their, their stores I don't know if they retained any any of them at all um, but if you know that for any of my US subscribers or viewers any ideas on that then pop, uh, pop it down in the comments I'd be keen to hear about that 
Okay, so that's um, all the resistors in. In fact, what we've got R6 now, which is 82E. Grey, black, red. Let's uh, tip these out and have a look. Oh, grey, red, black, there we go. That's R6. How are we doing for time? We're 10 minutes in. Um, I think, rather than me rambling on, um, I think I'll, I'll pop the video on hold, because I don't want to make this a three quarter of an hour uh, video and, and bore the pants off you with my rubbish rambling. Um, Although a lot of people say that they enjoy my rambling, which I find a little bit strange if I'm being totally honest. Um, but yeah, I'll um, I put the video on pause, and um, what will we do? I'll put the the resistors and diodes in. You've seen me do that a hundred times. I'll get the majority of the the passive components in, and then we'll finish up with the 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 connectors and the, the buzzer and all that sort of stuff so if you bear with me i'll catch you in just a moment okay folks welcome back right i've already built the transmitter unit there's nothing particularly taxing about building that um went together fairly straightforward um and as you can see i've done the majority of the receiver unit um all the passive components are in um the only thing left to do is put the switch and power socket and the buzzer in that actual uh I see in there, so we'll go ahead and do that and get it out of the way. So yeah, overall the the kits went together fairly fairly easily. Uh, no major dramas. Well, no dramas at all actually. It was a fairly nice kit to build. Of course, uh, we'll see if it works. That'll be the uh, that'll be the ultimate test, I suppose. So put the DC socket on. I'm not sure if these are actually necessary to put on. Um, they are switched. So um, I know Dave Jones did a, a segment uh, recently on DC jacks. And essentially um, there's a... Oops. Don't want to do that. Um, essentially uh, there is a switching element on these uh, DC jacks. So that if, if for instance, there is a, a battery fitted um, and you... And put uh, sorry, you plug in a an external power pack. It will disconnect the battery, um, so you don't you know end up putting power down into the battery and stuff like that. You know, run the risk of a fire, etc., etc. There's probably other reasons as well. But, um, so we'll put this on anyway. And like I say, I'm not sure if it's utilising that switch. Nearly there, there we go. Okay, what's next? Um, yeah, the buzzer positive on that side, so we'll pop that in there like so. I may have mentioned this before, but I know a lot of people like to use blue tack and such like for um, you know holding components in when. When uh, you know you've got a, a, a populated board, you know sometimes it's difficult to, to get the components to stay in um, as you get to the finishing, sort of finishing it up if you like. Uh, so sometimes I just like to uh, use a, a tool or something, use the gravity, the weight of the board, uh, to to basically hold the component in place, and it, it tends to work fairly well. Okay, so that is um, the board complete, other than putting these screws in which we'll do now and uh, of course popping the IC in so I can just line that up and you don't want to tighten these up straight away you just want to just nip them slightly and then um, get your other screw in place do the same with that. 
check everything for alignment, make sure it's not going to sit on anything. Um, in fact, I will take those out. As I didn't trim the leads off the, uh, the buzzer. There we go. As always, watts and all. Okay, we can tighten those down now. There is provision for three screws on this, but of course the, the buzzer is um, covering up the other, the other hole there. Okay, let's take our IC out. Uh, looks reasonably aligned, and we'll just see if this pops straight in. No, it doesn't. So we're going to have to roll roll the chip. Um, so hopefully you can see this in camera. Just put it on its side and gently push in. You know, rolling the chip over on the leads to bend the leads in slightly. And by doing that, you know, it keeps them nice and parallel with each other. There's one notch on that side. And that's it. And, and seated. Right, so we're now ready to test, so I'll clean all the bits and bobs off the desk. Get some nice fresh batteries, only the finest pound shop um, Kodak, heavy duty. I don't know how heavy duty and zinc carbon batteries go together. But anyway, so we'll pop the uh, battery in the transmitter first. And we can test this, and we may be able to test this by simply um, turning it on and pointing it towards the camera. Yep, there is definitely infrared. Can you see that purple there, that purple light? That's the infrared coming out of the, the LEDs there. So that's basically the beam that the receiver unit is going to detect. So make sure this is off. Pop the battery in. Right, okay, so by turning it on uh, with the transmitter off, the alarm does sound. Now, I may have to put a bit of tape over this. So it is, uh, it is working. So let's turn on the transmitter first and then turn on the receiver. Yep, so both units are on. Uh, no sound. So hopefully, fingers crossed, if I break the beam, the alarm should go off. Hmm. Well, that doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Wait till we see what's going on here. Transmitter on, receiver on. I think there may be too much in the way, uh, sorry, too much in the way of, um, so let's turn this off, <laughs> too much in the way of um, infrared being scattered around the, being scattered around the workbench here. Let me uh, try something else. Get this, uh, make sure there's no address on it. <laughs> Get this Amazon box and then see if that does anything. So. Transmitter on, receiver on. Yes, yeah, so that works reasonably well when it's a bigger thing. If it's just, if it's just some, uh, something small passing through, it's not going to work that well. But if it's a bigger thing, then of course it will go off. There we go. We got there in the end. Yeah, I think it might be going through this. Yeah, it is. I think the infrared was leaking through the hole in this. Okie dokes, right, enough rambling uh, for one night. That was the Velamin, what was it, MK120? I forget what it was called now. Yeah, MK120 Infrared Light Barrier Kit. Um, yeah, you can get it from Amazon. Like I say, it's eight ninety nine just now. Not Amazon, Maplin, sorry. Um, eight ninety nine just now, normal price is twelve ninety nine. 
Um, you can buy it direct from Velamint for around five pounds fifty, something like that. Um, with delivery and talk, which basically works out at the same price as Maple and Seller for just now. Um, I don't want to. Uh, I'm all for British businesses and all that good stuff and supporting British businesses. However, um, Maplin clearly have got a massive markup on these kits. Um, you can get, like I say, an equivalent kit uh, in a nice enclosure ready to install for the same price, less in fact, uh, than this kit. So, you know, make your own mind up on that one. Um, you know, by the time you've bought, purchased this in enclosures, like I said before, you, you're probably looking at 20 25 pounds for this to actually be functioning and installable if indeed you were intending uh, using it for for its intended purpose right anyway that is definitely it thanks for watching guys and girls if you enjoyed the video uh, give me a thumbs up if you didn't and you thought i was rambling too much and you know you just the sick of the sound of my voice then give me a thumbs down if you haven't read done so you'd like to so click my fat head down here and until next time um you know take care of yourselves and as always all the best